Hi and welcome to the Frank Book Club. I'm Simon Savage. And I'm Melanie Sykes. And we are back this December, almost at Christmas, for our festive read and discussion of Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. Yay! Hooray! Um, but before we talk about that, actually, I did just want to say we are very sorry that we missed November accidentally. Yeah, honestly, I, that was not, we, we didn't mean to do that at all. And I actually had to be reminded that we'd forgotten. <laughs> We're going to park boy parts till next year. Bum, bum, bum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got two boy parts. Ba -bum -bum. I have, I don't know why. Anyway, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. But we're sticking we with this for today. We will. Um, and this book is all about the McAllister family and it's set over one Christmas, uh, which where a secret comes to the fore from the Christmas before. So it's repercussions of another Christmas. One thing I randomly thought the other day was in Home Alone, were they not the McAllister family? And I wondered if that was a nod to Home Alone. I need to look. Oh, oh might be. I'm not very good. You've frozen. No, you froze. With that, because it's Christmas. <laughs> You're there now. <laughs> if we freeze, it's Jack Frost. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> but... Um, it's about the McAllister family and particularly about th their three children. So we have Rowan, we have Fern and we have Willow. Um, and uh, Fern is coming back with her boyfriend, Thomas, um, or what do they call him? Thomas. I think it's a joke. Yeah, I hope it's a joke. I think it's a joke. <laughs> There's lots of jokes in the book. Um, and also um, Rowan brings back his friend Sid. Um, who people think they're together, but they're not. Um, and then, yeah, there's a big reveal, which we'll come to later, because first of all, Melanie, did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. I thought it was really good fun. Um, very Christmassy. You know, it, it, it didn't... Um, I know, obviously, the cover dictates it, but it doesn't mean to say that would be delivered, and it really does deliver on that. It did get me in a Christmassy vibe, for sure. Um, it's got so many elements of a really good Christmas film, actually. Um, there's a lot of jokes in it, a lot of humour, um, really emotional bits. Um, the setting is fantastic. Big house in Scotland. Um, there's so much to like about this book. There is. And I think yeah. it's one of those books that you you just kind of gobble up, like I did, like a turkey. <laughs> gobble, and gobble, up. gobble. But um, how many Christmas references can we get into this video? We've only got one chance every year to do it. <laughs> but yeah, like a turkey, I gobbled it up in literally two sittings. Because it is, it's just so, you can't stop. You kind of just want to inhale it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such an easy read. It's, it's such an easy read. And I don't mean that in that the writing's not intricate or, or anything. I just mean it's just fun and you want to know what's going on. And you want to find out more. And it's just so, it's quite chirpy, actually. Considering some of the storylines, it's actually quite a chirpy book. Yeah. I don't know if authors would particularly like that description, but it's kind of too bad because <laughs> it is. <laughs> I was going to say hopeful. <laughs> well, it's that too. It's it, but it's that too, but it's the jokes. I guess it's, yeah. for me, the main character feels like Rowan. Would you say? Yes, I would. I'm just putting my screen down a little bit so that everyone can see Wham, because I was aware that... Oh, Wham, I love that T-shirt so much. It's my favourite Christmas song and possibly one of my favourite songs of all time. This is a riff off the um, E17 Christmas single, Stay Another Day, so there's a musical yeah. there. Anyway, I've got my Christmas jumper on and I'm sweating my arse off. I really wish I had a Wham, Wham T-shirt on right now. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all of our viewers. So, let's get back to the book. Right. It we doubles up as a fan. Recent fan. Yeah, I was about to say. It's, it's a good fan. I'm sorry, I haven't got my fan with me, so I'm going to have to use my book, so I've got myself in a hot sweat. So anyway, what do you think of it? Did you like it? I did. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. Um, there's some thoughts I'm going to come to you later about, like, one time, not a gripe that I had with it or anything, but I think it was me projecting onto the book, which I do do sometimes, and the fact that Rowan, in fact, I'm going to say it now, Rowan, um, Fern and Willow are all meant to be, like, 18, and I think Willow's actually, because Rowan and Fern are twins, and I think Willow's a little bit younger. I read them as if they're in their late 20s, early 30s, 
just some of the Why? way they were talking about things just felt like and I think Juno does dialogue amazingly but it just felt a bit older than but then I don't I suppose I'm not in contact with that many people that age so I don't really know my siblings are like 21 and 23 but so maybe yeah, so my, my eldest my eldest is 19 and conversations with him are the most interesting ones I have with anyone really Fine. so I sorry <laughs> Next year. No, not with everybody. Starring me. It'll just be Melanie and her eldest. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. Um, no, honestly, though, what, in terms of how people speak at that age, I don't think, I don't know. I just think it's adult themes, adult. Yeah, I don't know. What yeah, for me, I didn't. I didn't. I just took them as red. I took them as, as late teens because I think there's so much sort of sass and confidence. Um, I if I was doing it because the con kind of conversations, and I think it's a generational thing, the kind of conversations they're having in this book, I reckon 18, 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds are having, but I probably wasn't having them until my 20s or late 20s, just because things weren't as open and free. Because we should say, Rowan is openly gay. Um, his friend Sid, who he brings, is um, transgender and um, non binary. And uh, then we have Fern's boyfriend, who we discover is bisexual. So sexuality and the fluidity of gender and sexuality is like a really big topic in this book. But what I right. love is they're really big themes, but they're not crammed in. It all feels very natural. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're talk, talking about what, what you generationally you were talking about, if you go back to my generation, nobody was gay, nobody was bisexual. It's like nobody talked about it. So therefore it didn't bloody exist. Yeah. And also like with mine, like everyone says that my generation had it more, had it better. And I think we did a bit, but I still actually don't think, and that's one thing that I do love about this book, that even though Rowan is so, com is so comfortable with himself and so out there, actually it looks at like how badly he was bullied at school and how that is still going on. Because I think there's almost this sort of, sort of glossing over of everything now that no 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 now that kids have got books like this and da, 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 everything's so much better and it isn't really and that right, is well that's interesting because I I I yeah I didn't I I was one of those people that would assume that it's all cool now everybody's out and they're happily out and they're okay to tell their parents because I'm getting it now where I've got parents that I know whose children are coming out to them so I, I think, oh, this is happening. This is happening. But you're right. There's obviously, there'll be loads of people that are being bullied still. Yeah, yeah. And it, I, that, that, so, that bit of the book really chimed with me because I was bullied horrifically as a kid. It was horrible. Um, and actually it kind of brought that, not in a, um, I think we use, I think the term triggering is used way too often now, but um, just in a kind of, it made me totally empathise with the character. It didn't trigger anything in me, it just made me empathise because I've been through that, so I know what, what that's like. We've all been Absolutely, and, and and that's what that what it's great when you read a book and you completely align yourself with the characters. It just yeah. becomes even more real, doesn't it? So I think that's brilliant. I don't think it's brilliant that you were bullied. <laughs> no, but it makes us who we are. That's what I always say. It makes well, us exactly. Um yeah. also this book, like you're saying, it's so funny. Like from the beginning, I was laughing when um, Rowan's on Grinder on the train and describes it as the best uh, scientific insight into the penises of Britain. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just getting them pinged. And from the beginning, I was like, right, I'm going to have fun in this book. And you feel like that from the very start. But one thing I love that Juno did is she sometimes writes the um, chapters by the house. And I really love that. Because the house at the beginning is saying how it's been 121 years here and this is what it's seen. And then as it goes on, the house is having to learn that like people are non-binary and that there might be two men together. And I actually thought the house was a really good metaphor for um, sort of, I guess, consciousness around these things. Wow, I went deep. Yeah, no, but that's true and that's amazing. It's really, it really does do that. It was a lovely added element. It didn't really need it, but then it added to it. It wasn't, it didn't feel like an appendage. Um, yeah, so I like that. I liked that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Appendage made me giggle. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm giddy at the end of the year. It's even Yeah, me too. <laughs> even me too. Me too. Um, 
what was I going to say about it? Yeah, because we we it mentions Richard Curtis films as well within it within the storyline, doesn't it? Do you remember that it says it's like a Richard Curtis film? But the book is actually like a Richard Curtis film, right? Because it's got the jokes, it's got like um a car speeding to a train station, it's got um getting stuck in a snowstorm. Yeah, there's there's you know um public displays of um uh, well uh, on the train there's a bit where two of the characters are expressing love for each other and the, the whole train is applauding and things and it's just so like a film i think it would be a brilliant christmas movie i'd like it to be on netflix for christmas 2022 let's be honest me too i would really really enjoy i think it I don't see why it can't be out. There's one at the moment which I, I just can't even bear to watch about the Christmas number one. I keep seeing the advert for it and it's like, Whoa. but this, this is a story. Yes, this is how I feel about, um, I watched Single All The Way the other week and I wish I hadn't, whereas this is what I wish would be on my screens. But we should go back to like, because what the other thing that I love about it is all the characters that appear in the book come really, really fully formed. So even though Rowan is kind of the, the centre point of it really, like Sid, um, their, their friend, is is such a brilliant character and such a joyful character. And, and also like Willow, who's going through um, the repercussions of an eating disorder, well, is still kind of going through an eating disorder. Oh yeah, she still, yeah, she has yeah. an eating disorder, yeah. I, th I love the way it looked at how hard it is for her, how hard it is for her carers, how sometimes you don't know how to interact with people even when they're your family and they're going through really, really difficult things. But I really loved how it played with expectation because um, this is where we can say a few spoilers, so we might get a bit spoilery going on before the big reveal and kind of what I guess is the heart of the story about Tomothy. Um, but before Tomothy, I love how um, Juno plays with the parents because the mother has been cheating on the Tory MP father. Yeah. Now there's a thing. <laughs> Things like that that I just really loved. Also, I loved how it was handled and I loved how it looked at like, is it possible for heterosexual couples to have open relationships and played with the things that are stereotypically not what we expect, I guess. Yeah, um, exactly. It, exactly that. You expect the guy to be the one to have an affair, not the mother, and they're middle-aged. I guess they must be in their 50s. No. So, I mean... They were in their early 40s, Melanie. Were they? Yeah, and as someone who's almost turning 40, the fact that they were considered old made me quite cross. <laughs> oh, well, well, there was a lot of... Well, wow, because I'm just ancient then, aren't I, to these people? Um, so I didn't realise they were in the early 40s. But I guess it wasn't about having open marriages, was it, either? It was about forgiveness as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's big, and I think there's actually forgiveness is actually a huge theme because as we go on, so I guess we can do the big reveal now. So if you've not read the book, go read it. It's brilliant, but we're going to start talking about some of the spoilers. So if you stay on, it's your own fault. Um, because what we learn is that Fern's new boyfriend, Tom, had, they'd been on a break the Christmas before and he had ended up sleeping with and kind of having this mini holiday romance with Rowan. So that's the big reveal, which I didn't see coming. And you know what I'm like, Miss Marple? No, I didn't see that coming at all. I thought it was great, though. It was great because their meeting was so romantic as well. Yeah. And and they described it as, um, what was it? Those one of those snow, um, what they called snow globe. It yeah. was like a moment that was so perfect and beautiful. And, and, and Rowan almost argues that they wants to leave it at that. And um, but they were on a break. Him, his sister was on a break. Yeah, not on a break away, but on a break in the relationship. Just yeah, to be clear. They, they were on a break, like as in <laughs> Rowan and Tom were on a break because they were on a ski resort. Somewhere. They were on a ski break. Yeah, there was like a romantic break and a holiday. And he'd broken his legs. There's a lot of breaks. <laughs> They were on a break. Anyway, that's, but it's all, there's so many romantic bits to it, actually, as well. 
But also there's a really point with that I thought was quite powerful there because we hear about how um, Thomas had a problem with his ex, we discovered that Thomas had a problem with his ex-girlfriend who didn't accept his bisexuality. So that makes us look at Fern in quite a different light when we hear that. But what I really love about this book is that I don't think bisexuality is represented enough. And I think this book really looks at that in a very positive but very honest way. But I will say the only thing was I did feel a little bit um, like, but what was great about it is that Juno still made me believe it, even though when I found out that Rowan and Tom had slept together, I did do a bit of a, mm. <laughs> like. Yeah, because the chances, yeah. the chances. <laughs> but it was so well written, I carried on. And, and also it's the sort of book that you're so lost in, kind of the boundaries of reality shift because you don't care because you're enjoying yourself so much. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, because there's all, books, there's always something in a book you think, oh God, that they just had to do that in order to do that, you know, but it's forgivable in this because it's such a great read. Yeah, because I think there are books where that would actually, I'd just be like, no, I can't, that's too far, I can't bother to read anymore. And that wasn't the case at all. I did kind of just believe in this fate and chance and all of that kind of element. To yes. It. I really, really, really loved that. When you're reading, you're thinking, oh, I can't wait to get back to, it's always, for me, it was always, I can't wait to get back to Rowan, what Rowan's yes. up to and what Rowan's doing and what's he saying and... And I, but I guess that he was my favourite character. So yes, but it was lovely. But I was really intrigued by the parents as well. I liked the parents in it. I thought they were great. Well, I loved all uh, the, the extra characters. Like Fern's ex-boyfriend was brilliant. Like this man that she just has this amazing kind of thing with, although they've split up and but they can't quite shake it. I loved, I mean, there's some quite interesting scenes between them as the book goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's quite, there's quite a good one, isn't it? There at the party in the bathroom. So there's a, there is a little bit of sex in this, though. Not, not enough. <laughs> yeah, I think. I not think, nearly enough. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't normally say that I want more sex in a book, but I feel like sometimes I, I wanted. And actually, somebody, one of our questions was from Laura Ray, who said. <laughs> this is a bad term, but Laura, you're part of the gang putting it like this. In terms of the relationships, I wanted explosions um, and passion, but it never quite happened. That's quite interesting. That's Laura's thought. She felt like it didn't quite, the passion didn't quite explode enough, as it were. Yeah. Well, it did in that bathroom. <laughs> I thought that sink was going to be a goner. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think it would make it through the party <laughs> yeah there, there wasn't there exactly there wasn't much um there's not much passion in it there's there's emotional passion I think it's <laughs> love and how actually in one thing I'm going to say this I'm going to use another Christmas cheesy pun as the book goes on Rowan sort of thaws out <laughs> yes he does <laughs> he actually really does yeah because he uses he uses humour, doesn't he? He uses humour as a defence mechanism, for sure yeah. he does, yeah. He starts, he, we, he gets a bit of open heart surgery, really, doesn't he, during the course of the book? One thing that, um, so I'll go through a few questions from people that they've sent us, which is always lovely. Um, so Laura Ray also said, um, the themes so openly talked about were fantastic, and I did love the three siblings and their relatable nature. And I did feel like every character was real. It's all very extra and it's quite dramatic but I did feel that they were realistic people yeah I did actually yeah I don't think anybody was too much of a caricature or unrealistic at all no I thought that that was yeah it was done really well especially because I think some things like we've talked about there's eating disorder there's sexuality there's gender there's alcoholism but there's, there's all that shit going on in all families all over the world I mean we are we are complex we're human beings you yeah. know so I guess that um idea of a perfect family is just it just doesn't exist no it doesn't um Laura and her bookish thoughts would like to know if we had a favorite sibling I think we both did Rowan? Yeah, I totally. Did you like Rowan as well? Yeah, Rowan's personality reminds me so much of Juno. Oh, right, because you know Juno. Yeah, I know Juno, and I've known Juno for quite a while, and it is quite funny because, like, all the jokes are so, like, you're sat having a cup of coffee with Juno. Also, as well, what I loved is, speaking of jokes, I felt the whole way through the book, you were very in on the joke. 
you know what I mean? You were kind of with them on it. And it was, yeah, you, I felt like part of the family by the end of it. I felt like another yeah. sibling. I felt like yeah. I had to change my name to a tree. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all named after trees. But it's actually a very good point because when you're reading it, it's almost like you, you're, you've you got a seat at the table, haven't you? Yeah. You're in that living room. You're in that car. You're with them. You literally are with them. That's a really, really good point. And you don't always get that. No, not at all. I don't know how Juno does it, but it works, whatever it is. Yeah. I also think, because the book is technically um, aimed at sort of younger readers, sort of late teens, but actually... I think this is a book that older generations should be reading because I feel like this is the sort of book that will make you laugh along the way as you're learning so much about all these different, well, just like how younger society and society is. Well, I had no idea this book wasn't for me. So you, well, it clearly is. But I didn't didn't know it was, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know it was aimed at a younger audience at all. So, I, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's really interesting because I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, that does sound about not suitable for younger readers. So I think it means middle grade, not young adult. I, I don't like all of these divide divisions because I think it almost like is telling people when they're allowed to read adult books or telling adults you can't read that book. It, and I don't agree with all of that. I think that's bobbins because a lot of Victorian literature is kind of for everybody. Look at Sherlock Holmes, you know what I mean? So I don't like that anyway. But yeah. yeah. Um, what other questions? Have we? Oh, this is what I loved. Uh, James Reed's book said um, Juno's dialogue and voice of the teen is unparalleled in younger fiction. I've not read any, well, I've read other Juno books, but I haven't read that much other stuff, but I did believe everything everyone was saying. It felt authentic, but they felt real to me. The last time I watched, the last time I read something as a teenager with something like this was probably The Diary of Adrian Mole, right? I love those books. So good. So, so good. But that was the first time I'd read something where the voice was so clear and so straightforward about what the issues were and, and, and the honesty. So so I guess if you've read a lot of that, and this might be doing the same thing, I don't know. But it's hard to, to say when you haven't read anything for that age group for like forever. But I definitely want it. It's reminded me that I want to read a lot more of Juno's books because Juno's written absolutely loads. I've read most of them. Um, and as you were saying... Well, do- about um, this being adapted, uh, Juno's memoir, The Gender Games, I think is being adapted for telly. So that's going to be really, really interesting. Fantastic. Um, quite a few people said they would love to see this on screen. So uh, yeah, can we make that happen? That would be my Christmas wish. I, I, bet, I bet it is. I ha- I, if I was in that world, I'd be making it for sure. I really, 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 um, really. And it, it, really it really is Christmas Day. It yeah. really gets you in a Christmas mood. Yeah. So yeah. So I we love it. it, yay! I'm happy it's, about that. It's snowstorm with someone. Well, I should say my husband, but frankly, I <laughs> <laughs> someone or someone else will do. <laughs> so, but um, on that note, yeah, I really, really loved it. You liked it a lot. Loved it. I loved it. Um, so we would heartily, heartily recommend you give it a whirl. And there's still time to get it before Christmas. We're not filming in a bookshop, but if you can, do go and support your local bookshop. Either order it online through them or go in if you can obviously we're aware things are a little bit all over the shop at the moment understatement of the year <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um we don't have our next choice for next month because we're going to do an instagram live where we tell you the next four choices so that you can get them with your christmas book tokens or <laughs> or any dosh that you get and uh, yeah we'll let you know hopefully either between Christmas and New Year or the beginning of New Year. But once we've got a date, we'll share it on our Instagram so that you can come and join us for a chat. It'd be nice that as well, because people are to like chat along. I like all of that bit of Instagram. Life. I know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, darling. It'll be good fun. All yeah. right. Thank you. So that's it for this month. I guess we should just finish by saying have a very, very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. Happy holiday, everybody. And Happy New Year. And we'll see you next year. Bye. Okay, bye.